Welcome, viewers. Today we're peeling back the layers of an enthralling tale, the saga of why Sweden is plunging into the depths of Europe's largest excavation at the Karuna mine. But first, let's step back and appreciate the historical tapestry of Karuna. Traditionally known for its iron and phosphorus riches, Kiruna recently stepped into the limelight with the unearthing of rare earth elements, or REEs. Now why should we care about these REEs? Well, they're the unsung heroes behind our cutting-edge technologies, from semiconductors to high-power magnets. Picture this. China dominates this domain, contributing a staggering 70% of the world's REEs. This isn't just about technological prowess, it's a geopolitical advantage that could reshape the global power balance. So as we unravel the layers of Karuna's rare earth discovery, join me in understanding how a seemingly routine mining venture could hold the key to Europe's technological independence and geopolitical standing. Stay tuned for more as we navigate the fascinating landscape of Sweden's quest for rare earths. Now, let's delve into the core of Europe's rare earth challenge, its significant dependence on China. It's a stark reality that 98% of the European Union's rare earth elements, REEs, are sourced from the Asian giant. This lopsided reliance isn't just a statistic. It's a strategic vulnerability that sends ripples through the intricate dynamics of global power. China, wielding a virtual monopoly over the REE market, tightens its grip through export quotas, this isn't bureaucratic red tape, it's a calculated strategic move. The reverberations of such control materialized vividly in the 2010 unofficial embargo on rare earth exports to Japan, serving as a stark reminder of the geopolitical ramifications tied to Europe's dependence on a single source for these crucial elements. The figures underline the severity of the situation, with the European Union drawing a staggering 98% of its REs from China. This reliance extends beyond mere trade. It's a vulnerability that potentially exposes Europe to geopolitical pressure. Now, shift your focus to the Paga deposit, a beacon of hope discovered in 2023 a mere two kilometers from the Karuna mine. However, the initial excitement is tempered by the deposit's complexities. Despite its proximity, Paga presents a nuanced composition. Its density poses a formidable puzzle, and the rare earth concentration, frankly, leaves much to be desired. Now let's shift our focus to the environmental and societal dimensions of Europe's quest for rare earth independence, starting with the existing Karuna mine. Brace yourselves for the reality that accompanies large-scale mining operations. The environmental impact is tangible, with the land around Karuna experiencing sinking and cracking, prompting the relocation of the town. The magnitude of this transformation highlights the profound alterations wrought by extensive mining activities, but it doesn't stop there. The expansion of mining activities, including the existing Karuna mine and potential ventures like the Paga deposit, casts a shadow over the historical land and lifestyle of the Sami people. These semi-nomadic people, deeply connected to their land, face disruptions as infrastructure encroaches on their traditional territories, affecting reindeer grazing areas and migration roads. Now let's weigh the positives and challenges associated with the Paga deposit. On the optimistic side, local rare earth element, REE, production could potentially liberate Europe from its heavy dependence on China. This shift would not only enhance regional autonomy, but also insulate Europe from geopolitical vulnerabilities tied to a single source. However, let's not downplay the challenges. Extracting REs from Paga comes with its complexities. Waste production, extraction difficulties due to density issues, and potential societal impacts present formidable hurdles. The process involves copious amounts of toxic chemicals generating waste gases and toxic wastewater that demand careful handling. Now let's broaden our perspective and delve into the global landscape of rare earth elements, REs, production. Brace yourselves for some eye-opening figures. Globally, the entire world produced just 300,000 tons of REs in 2022. Now here's the kicker. China stands as the unrivaled powerhouse, contributing a staggering 70% to this global production figure. It's a dominance that echoes through the rare earth market, establishing China as the epicenter of this critical resource. But is there hope beyond China's monopoly? Indeed there is. Potential alternative sources exist in regions like the United States, Canada, Australia, and India. While these countries boast significant REE deposits, their production figures, for now, pale in comparison to China's colossal output. Now, 
Let's peer into the future and explore potential solutions to Europe's rare earth dilemma. Advances in REE recycling and technology offer promising avenues. Imagine a future where we extract these valuable elements from discarded products, minimizing the need for new mining endeavors. It's a shift that could redefine the landscape of rare earth production. However, this brings us back to the heart of the matter, the decision Sweden faces in developing the PAGA deposit. It's a dilemma balancing economic benefits against environmental and societal costs. The existing Kiruna mine's impact on land and the Sami people underscores the gravity of this decision. In conclusion, I invite you, our viewers, to share your thoughts on whether Sweden should proceed with digging Europe's largest hole. Your insights are invaluable as we collectively navigate the complexities of this rare earth saga. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, like, and share this video for more thought-provoking content. Stay tuned for our next exploration into the fascinating realms of